for the rollout of bicycle sharing. All around the world, and especially here in North America, we've seen several of the largest cities in the U.S., New York City, of course, Chicago, San Francisco, all roll out bicycle share systems. Here at ITDP, we really want to make sure that this trend continues and that cities all around the world continue to adopt bicycle share. And to make that easier, we've launched a bicycle share guide that breaks down the barrier, helps cities understand exactly what goes into making a bicycle share system, how to make it successful. The idea being more cities will adopt these bike share systems and the systems that they do implement will continue to be high quality that really serve city residents and cyclists well. We launched just this Memorial Day and we've been seeing over 40,000 rides per day on a 6,000 bike system routinely across the season. So. New Yorkers have made City Bike their own. They've integrated into the transportation system. Uh, we've got over 90,000 members in just a few months. We, we sold out the 5,000 founding memberships in 36 hours last spring. And I think Bike Share's just got a tremendous future in, in New York and in the cities of the world. Dibby's been a huge success, and not just because I'm saying it, but everybody in the city loves it. It's got a really positive uh, vibe around it, a great reputation as being reliable transportation, and it's fun. Bike share has really been embraced pretty heavily by the NACTO cities, and I don't think that's a coincidence. You know, first of all, I think all the NACTO cities really get the importance of cycling as a, an important mode of travel in our cities to make them more sustainable. Bike share is a way to jump up your, your mode share in cycling. It's a way to introduce people into cycling that might not uh, otherwise try it because they don't have a bike. It's also maybe a way to get more people to do more of their trips on a bike. We researched over 25 systems around the world to figure out what makes a bike share system really good. And some of the things we found are pretty common sense that uh, bike share systems need to have attractive, high quality bikes that people are actually going to want to ride. Uh, they need to have stations that are easy to use and payment systems that are easy to use. Divi means to divide and share. You got a nice little bell built in. You got three speeds. You got a basket up front, which holds my briefcase perfectly, or a bag of groceries. Of course, we have fenders so that you don't get splashed by water. So this is a uh, all weather, all year bike. We got the rules of the road right here. Follow traffic laws, walk bikes on sidewalk. This uh, cute little key fob here, you stick it in, pull it out. When it turns green, you lift the seat, pop it right out, uh, then, adjust the seat, and it's got numbers on there, see? So, so I always know that I'm a five. And that's it. We also dug into a lot of the data and we first tried to answer, what does a high quality bicycle share system even mean? And what we found is that the density of the stations is incredibly important in determining how many people will use the system. The higher density of stations throughout the city, the more convenient it is for people uh, who want to use it. The stations are closer together, they're closer to the people who want to ride them, and they're closer to their destinations. We found that the best systems have between 10 and 16 stations per square kilometer. We've created some of the biggest bike share uh, stations that, in the world because of the density, because of the numbers of people that pour out of these buildings and the number of people who want a better connection to transit. We're seeing seven rides per day, six rides per day regularly before it got cold. And I think there are a couple reasons for that. One is we spent five years putting in a really good bike lane network. In the current city bike area, we have 152 miles of bike lanes, including 30 miles of protected bike lanes. And that's something a city like London uh, doesn't have. Some other great things about bike sharing is that it's a really healthy form of active transport that gets people in shape as they get around. Uh, it's also available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It, it doesn't shut down at two in the morning and you don't have to wait for it to arrive. You just walk to the station and the bike is there. I've been using it almost every day just because it's fun, because it's easy to use. You don't have to worry about locking your bike at the other end. You just find a pod and you plug it in and you walk away. Bike share works. Bike share in big transit-based cities like New York, it always works. We're developing on our waterfronts. We don't have subways on the waterfronts, so people are using bike share to get to and from mass transit. One other thing I'm really proud of with Divi uh, and really with all bike sharing systems 
is that there's really a social equity, social justice component to this. Um, there are parts of our city that uh, don't have the best bus service or don't have CTA rail. And we can put Divi stations there and create a public transportation system at very low costs. A membership to Divi is $75 a year. That's 20 cents a day. If you live in a fifth floor walk up building, you might not want to own a bike. Or you may have had a couple stolen and you don't want to go there again. City Bike has cleared away those last obstacles. And that's why we've seen over 5 million rides just in the last five months on the system. So there's a whole bunch of really interesting and successful different bicycle share system types happening around the world. You've got Hangzhou in China, which has over 50,000 bikes considered the largest bicycle share system in the world. Uh, Mexico City, which is probably our highest performing system in, in North America, has 15 stations per square kilometer. So the stations are really closely spaced throughout the coverage area. Um, they're easy to find, they're close to destinations. In Washington, D.C., in 2012, Capital Bicycle Share recovered 120% of its operating cost through user memberships and user fees on using the system. If you compare that with the local public transit, the buses and the trains, those have a 50% subsidy. So the bicycle share system is actually a really economically sustainable mode of public transit as well. Chicago has now made an announcement that they plan to have the, the, most, sta the most stations of any bicycle share system in the country. We had already planned to go to 400 stations. We announced an expansion to 475 but with more CMAC money. We've also got an application uh, to the state for another 75 stations, which we don't know if will be awarded, but that would take us to 550 next year. So we're really seeing these systems grow and expand in different ways around the world, and it's a really positive thing. All these systems are getting better.